Welcome at another episode here at the Future of Information and Communication Conference in Singapore, where I'm talking to some of the most highly reviewed authors of the papers that are being presented here. And in this episode, we're zooming in on channel decoding, more specifically cognitive channel decoding, with Natasha Sivic from the University of Siegen. Natasha, welcome. Thank you very much. Now let's start with the why. Why is it important to dive into channel decoding? Channel decoding is a part of any, any communication, so there is no communications without channel decoding, especially no wireless communication. So we are talking about wireless, very noisy communication, especially mobile, satellite, etc., radio communication especially. And then uh, we are talking additionally about uh, secure wireless communications, which mean means that we are using also cryptographic techniques or mechanisms in order to uh, protect the message any sort of message from each is, uh, eavesdropping etc. Exactly, but now when we talk about wireless communication, obviously the aerospace is getting fuller, so we have to deal with noise and interference. That's right, more and more noise. That is why we, uh, we need additional techniques we which will battle against this noise and each all of these interferences and so on. Also, we are working with m higher and higher data rates. Now. What is the specific problem when my cryptographic wireless communication becomes interfered with noise? The problem is the so-called avalanche effect, which is known in a cryptographic field, which means if you have a message which you protect with the message authentication codes or a digital signature and so on, uh, it is enough that only one bit of the message is erroneous. In spite of channel decoding techniques, which are very strong nowadays, like turbo codes used uh, for the mobile communications or LDPC codes, etc. So it is sufficient that only one bit is wrong, or of course more, so that this cryptographic authentication fails. So what will you do in that in, uh, in that case, and this case will always be the case because you we are dealing with very noisy communications. Exactly. So we need additional algorithms which will help us to improve channel coding and channel decoding so that we can, uh, that we can um, um, correct the remaining part of the errors so that our authentication can be successful. And that is why I mean, I'm working on such an algorithms. Exactly. In the paper you described the new algorithm you, you developed, mm -hmm. can you tell us what's innovative about it? Because it's called cognitive channel yes, decoding. Yes, what's cognitive yes. about it? Cognitive is the part where some parts of the message which are already corrected using another algori algorithm which are explained and developed are used as a knowledge for the next rounds of this iter iterative process, iterative algorithms, so as a knowledge how to correct the errors or the remaining er errors better mm -hmm. in next rounds, in next iterations. And wha what are the benefits of that? The benefits are that we don't need any additional software, uh, a little bit of additional software, but no additional hardware. And this process is self-learning. It corrects itself without any help from a third party, from any uh, any other machine. So, so it is like it's so, uh, solving the problem itself. Exactly, it's getting faster and better over yes, time. Yes, yes, because we are correcting errors. When we correct errors, we can also uh, transmit a bigger amount of data. The data rate can be higher, and that is what we need for in, in 4G or in 5G in all new mobile communications techniques. Yeah, we need to be able to scale, and that's why we need these smarter channel decoding. Yes. Tests. Now, for those people who've never been at a Future of Information Communications conference, the FICC, can you describe what your experience has been like here today? It's a very nice atmosphere. I met some old colleagues. That is always a nice part of people um, um, traveling to different conferences, working in this field. But uh, I also met some other very clever people and I heard uh, some very nice, very new ideas. As the title of the confer uh, conference promises, as I expected that we will talk about some future topics, some future themes, and th that is uh, really what happened. And it was also very fun. <laughs> also, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing <laughs> briefly your insights. If people are curious to learn more about your research, look Natasha up online. And if you're curious to learn about other innovations presented here at the conference, click around at the SAI conference website or on our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button right now so you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. I'm looking forward to meet you in person at one of our future conferences.